I got a couple big guys in the studio today, one from Guild USA and one from Gibson USA. I got an F55E and an SJ200 Studio Rosewood. We're going to dive in, compare these two jumbos, see which one sounds better. Stick around. How's it going, y'all? My name is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at Alamo Music dot com if you haven't already subscribe to the channel comment on the videos like them up go check out the podcast got it in the description below it's called the fretboard confessional where we keep talking about guitars because it's never enough is it there's never too much guitar content out there even though uh feels like there is dive in got some fun stuff on the podcast today in the video we're talking jumbos specifically spruce top Rosewood back and sides jumbos. Obviously, many of you know the SJ200 um, in its more, more known maple version, maple back and sides. This is the studio. Now, when you think about Gibson and studio, you might be thinking about electric guitars where studio is a less expensive version of the standard kind of stripped down. Um, this may be a little bit stripped down, but it is definitely, and I guess yes, it is less expensive than an SJ200 standard. But this is still a premium, professional grade, high end acoustic guitar over here. Um, just they have the studio version to have some rosewood on there. So um, spruce, Seca spruce, and rosewood back and sides, nitro finish, mahogany necked um, jumbo from Gibson. And then over here, I got a Sitka spruce. Yes, that is Sitka spruce. It does have an antique burst on it. Uh, Sitka spruce, rosewood, mahogany necked jumbo from Guild USA. I'm going to stick the uh, Gibson down for a second and talk a little bit about the Guild. Um, recently, we got some D40 traditionals in from Guild, and it was special because we get like one maybe every quarter. They sell before we're able to play them, and then we're left thinking, hey, wish we had some more Guild USA stuff. Um, so we did kind of take the plunge. We ordered some different things that we don't usually get. Um, including this F55E, and it came in, um, I believe, today, and I was down in the warehouse. I saw it come in, and it's just an exciting little thing. We've got the um, Westerly Collection Jumbos, the F150, um, you know, Super Duty Lariat King Ranch uh, that we've reviewed before, and that's a great guitar. It is all solid wood as well, but it is an import guitar, so it's just kind of special to see some nice uh, all solid Guild USA nitro finished acoustic guitars. Um, I did mention that this one has a mahogany neck. It is nice and you'll see in the up close photos on the website and everything. It's got a little walnut strip in there in the middle making a three piece neck. Just a cool little, uh, you know, extra fancy thing. We have reviewed the D55 on the channel as well before. It's the chocolate cake guitar, spruce rosewood dreadnought. Um, this has similar appointments, you know, when you take a look, that's, it's the luxury series, you know, the 55, um, the V block inlays, the nice binding around the whole thing. It's got gold go toes on there, open geared go toes, which is a, uh, upgrade at any, uh, you know, in anything go to tuners are going to make it a little bit nicer. Um, and it does come loaded with a pickup. It's got an LR bags Anthem. Um, I am playing it just acoustic with a WA-47 Junior Condenser in the demos, but it does have a really nice pickup. Everybody knows the LR Bags Anthem. It's a fantastic pickup. Um, so yes, it's a jumbo body guitar with rosewood. You're going to expect all that beautiful low end and the harmonics and also the kind of high end punch because rosewood scooped when it comes to the EQ. And um, it does come in a natural finish. I like the antique burst. I think it looks classy, and I, I am not a huge fan of burst acoustics, but there's something about this one. Uh, looks nice, it's striking, and it's pretty. So that's the F55E. Now, SJ200 Rosewood, um, I think doesn't get enough attention because everybody thinks about the SJ200 standard with the maple. It is very, very similar in terms of what we talked about with the F55. It does have a pickup in it and it is an LR bags, but it's an LR bags element, not the Anthem. So a little bit stripped down on pickup, still very high quality. It's got the Grover Rotomatics, no Gotos, but I'm a Grover fan as well. 
Um, and it is a little bit stripped down in terms of the aesthetic adornments. The body is bound, but the fretboard and the headstock is not. Um, and that is just an aesthetic thing. It doesn't change a ton when it comes to the feel. Obviously, bound fretboards, people dig them, you know, maybe an unbound has the possibility of getting a little sharp fret action, but these are beautifully made guitars, made in America, Gibson up in Montana. And I would implore anybody that is looking for a Gibson jumbo, do not uh, turn away from the SJ200 Studio Rosewood. It's uh, easy to go for the classic with the vintage sunburst and the maple back and sides, but there is something to be said about the tonal qualities that you get from rosewood as opposed to maple. A lot of people talk about the punchiness of maple, and yes, you're gonna get low end, uh, the body size is there, the depth, all the extra air that you're gonna push out from the huge top, but there's a reason why spruce and rosewood is kind of the quintessential combination. So I'm gonna play a little bit on both of these. Surprisingly, I do think that they sound pretty different from each other, even though the formula is pretty much the same. So um, do a little pick in on both of them, take a listen, maybe use some good speakers, put your headphones in if you really wanna hear the differences. Um, and then I'll talk to you kind of what I hear on the back end. Let's do it.
So there you go, a little sound sample on the Gibson and the Guild. Now, what are my thoughts? Hopefully y'all heard the same thing. It's a little bit different coming from this side of the guitar versus out in front of it, which is how you're hearing it. Um, I do think that the Gibson nails the low end best when it comes to jumbos. Some about strumming just an open E on the low E string, um, it really projects and it booms and it's something that I really dig about any Gibson jumbo um, or super jumbo as it were. I do like that this guitar is a little more understated when it comes to appointments. Um, I'll get to the guild in just a second. I dig the mustache bridge and how the end of the fretboard kind of signals that look. It's classic and it's something that everybody you know thinks of when you think about classic Gibson super jumbos or jumbos. Um, and I like it. I think the tone is definitely leaning more towards the low end side. And that's where it comes to the Guild for me, which surprisingly had a lot more crisp brightness. And I'm not sure if that comes from the bracing. These are both scalloped X braced guitars. Um, I don't know what's going on different under the hood to make it that way, but these should have sounded much more similar than what I think they came out sounding like. And I think that it speaks to the kind of vibe that both of these brands go for. Gibson has always been, I mean, Rosewood is not a mid-range heavy tone wood, but their acoustic guitars feel very mid-range to low end, old school lo-fi tone. I think a lot of people agree with that. The Guild, much like the D40 that we showed off not too long ago, the D40, that is a mahogany back inside Dreadnought, but it had so much bright, crisp tone to it. And I think anytime you get a jumbo, the low end is gonna be built in just based on the body size. Um, and so it's up to the guitar maker, the luthier, the manufacturer um, to accentuate the high end because you're always gonna get low end from a guitar this size. I think that the Guild captured the high end crispness a little bit better for me. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, if you are into the lo-fi classic record, big strummer, singer, songwriter tone, probably you're leaning towards the Gibson. Um, for me, I like to do a lot of lead on acoustic and a jumbo is not the go-to lead guitar. You know, most people think playing lead, you're gonna have a triple O, maybe something a little smaller. Um, but this is a guitar that I think lends itself to really crisp cut through the mix leads. Um, like I said, I enjoy the burst. I like Guild USA stuff, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else comes in. You know we're a big fan of the D55 and the D40. This is the first time I've gotten to play an American-made Guild Jumbo, and it did not disappoint. Um, I think that the smallest nitpicky thing I can think of is I like the color of the binding on the Gibson more. It's more of an antique white. This is more of a bright white. It will age over time because that's what it's supposed to do. It's built to last. Um, so, and they both come with really nice hard cases. The Guild um, does have a humidifier in the case. I don't know if that's gonna sell anybody on, you know, to lean more towards this one, but it is maybe a slightly nicer case. So definitely fan of the Guild case, and I'll probably lean towards the Guild guitar as well. But I do think that the SJ200 doesn't get enough love when it's in its studio rosewood form. Everybody loves the standard, but check out the studio and uh, check out more Guild USA stuff because there's some underrated um, classics that have been around for quite a long time that just don't get as much love. So tell me what you think in the comments below. Let us know what other Guild USA stuff that you'd like to see, or if you'd like to see this Guild F55E up against a Westerly Collection Jumbo because I'm pretty sure we got a couple of those in stock as well. If you want to see the F55 with the maple back insides, because they make it, obviously, when we get an SJ200 standard, you know, in the next 15 years or something, if we ever get one again, um, and we can nail down a F55 with maple, of course, we're going to compare those as well. Um, would be interested to see if the sound is as drastic as the Rosewood Jumbos um, in terms of tonal difference. Let me know what you think. Do they sound exactly the same to you? Do you have a preference on the two? Do you own some Guild USA stuff? Do you own uh, lesser known and loved Gibson USA acoustics? 
We want to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, go on the website, alamomusic.com. You can chat, you can email us, you can call us, and uh, we'd love to speak with you. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.